Hello and welcome to Dice Masters United. I'm Spug. I'm Ben. I'm James. And I'm Peter. Coming up in this episode. Our review of every card in the Dark Phoenix Saga set hits the home stretch with a run through all of the super rares and all of the basic action cards. We'll also be reading the rare cards from the set that you are most excited about getting to the table. Before we chat about what appears to be an accidental leak of Kryptonite Crisis stock, including a shock return of the once all-conquering half-f bard ability. All that and more in the latest episode of Dice Masters United. Yes, well, as James said, we are in the home stretch of our epic quest to review every single card in the Dark Phoenix Saga expansion. We have ticked off 120 cards so far. Can you believe that? Can you believe that we've done 120 cards so far? Um, but we are now very much getting towards the end and we are on to the red stripes, the super rares. And there are 16 of these and there are also 16 basic action cards that we're going to rattle through this evening so we might as well get straight to it and ben i believe you are going to kick us off with our old friend angel for the fourth time i believe in this discussion <laughs> angel is back again back again from xavier's dream the three cost shield an x-men affiliated character while angel is active your opponent can't target your psychic dice with global abilities yeah yep yeah, all right, fine, sure. If you <laughs> really want psychics in the field for something, um, yeah. then okay, I guess. Makes them not immune to static field. If you need to get a psychic through that's uh, big, you can get them big in something else in this set, right? Is there a Vulcan that gives you... Um, yeah, well, there's okay. front line. Yeah, front line, but there's something else that like lets your psychics get buff when they get buff, right? Yeah. That's right. Is it Corsair, I think? Might yeah, be Corsair. I think so, yeah. Um, um, I know it's a red die. That's in my head. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Corsair, not Vulcan. Uh, yeah, so this this is good for that, to stop them messing with the psychics for that kind of team, but I don't think it's going to see a ton of play. No. Yeah. It's a three-cost shield. Did you say three-cost? I can't remember if you said it's a I, cost. Yeah, no, it's cheap, yeah. and Angel stats are okay for that. Um, and this is not a bad ability. Max two is interesting, I suppose. Hmm. Um, the angels do have a funny max, don't they? They like they count do. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is fun. Um, and you don't need any more than one of these, so uh, it's not a bad card all around. Not an excited, not a card to get excited about, but one that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody else want to weigh in on angel? Are you liking it? Hating it? Just marrying it, if that's a, yeah, a word. Yeah, but not, not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll keep it if you get it in draft, but that's about as far as it goes. I mean, it's super ass, you definitely keep it if you get it in draft. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. You can sell it or trade it immediately. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have it on eBay before the draft is even finished, probably. Um, but... There we go. All right, well, um, let's not spend any more time on him. I mean, I suppose, well, I say that, but then I think if if, there, if you did have some way of transferring power or, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, well, let's not waste any more time on Angel then, shall we? And move straight on to James and give us Beast is back. Uh, Beast, also subtitle, Save Xavier's Dream, is a three-cost fist with the X-Men affiliation, and uh, while you have an active psychic, Beast gets plus one attack, and he has the keyword overcrush. This wouldn't seem so bad if the common was not uh, one cheaper and also has overcrush, so yes, yeah, right, <laughs> wonderful, for, for the extra cost of one, you get a, a plus one attack. Which is all right. Nothing to be sniffed at if you have an active psychic. Yeah. Well, I'll be selling this one immediately as well. <laughs> come, come across it. You think there are things, okay? Go on. Well, how it's would you right. use it then? It's, how it's would you right. use it it's, if you think it's all right? Well, you can get a few of them, can't you? Out. You get four of these out with four, three, three, four overcrush. Yeah. Then, yeah, not that's going to be pretty difficult to do. 
deal with, especially in drafts. It's really good. But yeah. yeah, surely though, you would rather get four. Well, not rather, but you you might you would much more easily get four of the commons out, and more likely in draft as well. It's just not a very good super rare. They don't get a plus one, do they? They don't get. Yeah, but just, they don't get a plus one, but they've still got overcrush and they cost one less. I mean, mm. yeah, that's, that's but quite I think that difference. that plus one does make a difference, though. No, it does. I I know, it's not worth the extra money. There are, there are the repeatability ways. with the pumping. I don't know because to make the difference up, you'd have to pump it every time. Whereas mm. I don't know. I I think there's space for this. I, I see it on the same level as kind of the. I don't have. I'm thinking about the Kang from Infinity Gauntlet, which is a three cost. Yeah. We were very excited about that one, but that didn't play out as much. But I think this is kind of similar to that. Now. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels like, I mean, those kind of very low statted overcrushing dice have never really flourished in this meta, have they? No, I guess not. It's all about one big dude. Yeah. I mean, if we did have oh, a transfer power un- type. Uncharacteristically. <laughs> you with your transfer power. Indeed. <laughs> sure. Um, but I'd still prefer the the common. So I'm I'm uncharacteristically unexcited about this. <laughs> Would you rather like have it. this than the Psylocke that um, gives stuff overcrush? Slash gives itself overcrush. No, because I think having the flexibility to give overcrush to other bigger things is better really, isn't it? I mean it's hard to make beast that big. I guess there is that the rare cable that we obviously talked about in the last episode that doubles the a of other dice which is obviously pretty good with this beast because they'll all have built in overcrush but i just think the psylocke is better because she can fit alongside most other big beat sticks and she's a two cost mask which is pretty cool um because masks are always handy so no i would rather have her i think i think overall we seem to be feeling like beast is decent but not great so shall we move on to corsair james indeed uh, Corsair, back from outer space, is a five-cost fist with no affiliation. If four or more of your character dice were KO'd this turn, you may prep a Corsair die from this card. And he has the keyword deadly. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's all right. I would never <laughs> actually buy it, but since you don't mm. have to, it's not too bad if you happen to be if you happen to be KOing a bunch of stuff for some other reason. Yeah. Um, it's not really my kind of thing, but yeah, yeah deadly one. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, Peter. Uh, what do you make of it? Cool ability, but I don't. I don't. I think I'll, I'd sell it right after the draft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all these things you're selling. I'll the buy, market, I'll, I'll buy. the market is <laughs> going to be flooded, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to be nothing but <laughs> for sale red striped. Um, uh, I think. Uh, so I think there's cool. a um, on the most recent. Um, Ministry of Dice podcast. I think this was the card they were talking about. Um, if you use it with the Hope Rachel combo, yeah, right. So you can blow up the field and then immediately prep this to roll next turn. So it adds to the stat boost. You know, one of the things Hope Rachel struggles with mm. is getting enough damage through after you cleared the field. Yeah, after blowing it up. So this mm. is kind of one that will immediately prep for you. Yeah, that's a nice idea. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So if you have that kind of board blow up the board kind of idea presumably he doesn't have to be active in order for this ability to work then yeah normally not right yeah it doesn't have to be so if you just ko four characters boom yeah so it would be that's a nice idea actually to do it with the hope rachel combo that could blow up the field ko all of your characters and then prep one of those to roll next turn but then even his stats are not very big are they he's only a three three four yeah it's not, i mean yeah it's okay it, if you, yeah. you get it for free though in the... and then if you go uh, out with the hope copy that cable then it's suddenly a six, yeah, six yeah. eight right yeah. <laughs> right. and yeah. really cheap fielding so I think that's a nice combo mm. it's probably a win more card rather than a yeah yeah. but I do well, think there's I'm a tinker ability with this the slot yes which is yes. interesting it feels more winning than the two cards that we previously talked about so uh, mean. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I like all three of these so far. They're all good without being great, which is I kind of want where the super rares I want them to be. I don't want them to be like so difficult to get that you know. No, exactly. No, yeah. exactly. I quite agree with you, Ben. Um, 
Do you want to give us another imaginatively titled, subtitled cards <laughs> in the form of Cyclops, Ben? <laughs> another one of Xavier's dreams. Yeah, Six he's having a lot bolt. of dreams. He is. Well, he's a, got a big brain, so. Yeah, that's true. Big brains have big dreams. They <laughs> do. I say speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that could be another whole, co- no, whole podcast series in itself, couldn't it? Ben's big brain. Big yeah. brain anyway. dreams. Sorry, sure. go on. Um, six cards bolt, X-Men affiliated. Cyclops, while you have a psychic die active, when Cyclops attacks, deal X damage divided how you choose among any number of target opposing character dice. Where X is the number of your character dice in the field zone. Yeah. When you have a psychic die active, so <laughs> you have to think it's basically about range, one. right? Yes. So it's like the Venerable Dreadnought, you have to have a psychic active. Yes. Yeah. But you could put more than one damage onto one character. So it's more flexible. Yes. Yes, because range would specifically have to be. No. Be... Yeah. No. No, because the Dreadnought, basically, this works by itself, whereas the Dreadnought gives everyone else range, right? So you get the same effect, but different ways. But not if yeah. they have something like uh, Mystique or Black Widow Agent. Yeah, yeah so how would that... Range so I guess would be nullified, and with this you could put yeah a one thing of like five damage on something and it would turn into four. Yeah, 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 okay. So that is strictly better. But strictly Hang more on, expensive doesn't it, too. Doesn't it reduce it at source? Uh, does it deal X minus one damage, or is it is it yeah. minus one for each target? If it, if you do mystique or yeah yeah it, if if you if you would want to deal one damage to each character, then it will all be nullified. But if you want to deal five to one character, I think yeah, it's not the way you would just it? said it, to, to James. I. Oh, okay. I'd have yes. thought it was X minus one because that's because they reduce the ability the ability damage by one. Yeah, interesting. Okay. No, it's for each target it's reduced by one. Yeah, it's damage mm. dealt to characters, right? Mm, this yeah. came up though. Ooh, no, I it's, not the damage, say, okay. it's not the, it's not the damage active. received, it's the, the damage output. There is Mystique a rule. It's active that, reduced I don't know damage from opposing character abilities by one. Well, that, so yeah, yeah, I would I would actually that's say ambiguous, that, I think. I would actually say, yeah, the Cyclops damage gets reduced by one. Can you choose the one then? So that needs a ruling. No. Mm, yeah, I, I feel like there might be a ruling. I'll have a look at it. Uh, I'll, I'll see. I'll, I'll have, you, you carry on. Put it in the show notes, James. That'll be the, <laughs> that'll be the place for something like that. I mean, <laughs> I think James. Ruling somewhere. I I think to make it to make us That's good though. To make us two on each side, I reckon that James, yours, your interpretation sounds right to me. In that it should be X minus one rather than I, I, minus I think one to I each agree character. As well. Oh, you've changed your mind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. I just wanted to read the way Mystique was written, but yeah. Yeah. I think I attempt to agree, which makes, I mean, that makes this even better. It does. Yeah. And this he's... would be good if it was the first way around. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's expensive, but of course, obligatory hope mention. You yeah, can, that's true. Uh, you can get him in the field for three if mm. you buy a hope and then copy him. And then actually, then that's a pretty good, you know, if you, if you've got like a Mr. Sinister global that's getting lots of sidekicks in the, in the field, if you've got a few other characters, you could do, you could clear off quite a few blockers potentially when you attack by using this damage. Mm-hmm. Would it not be better to copy Rare Phoenix or something who apparently we, we did an injustice to? Or something? <laughs> or was she? She was. She was the one that stops things with a four attack defense, block. four attack or less. Yeah, less than four attack blocking. It might be. And she's a six cost, and she's also an X Men. It might not be James. I wouldn't want to give you a definitive answer. <laughs> 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 well, I think that. I mean, that it's that rare phoenix. Of you. <laughs> yeah, different things though, right? Like that rare phoenix is. Yeah. This is how you get your exactly. characters through. Mm. This is you can block. You can, it's flexible, right? You can just use it to remove stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And the nice, the nice thing about this is, is, is that you can, you know, with something like range, it's you have to, don't you have to, do you have to attribute the damage to stuff, even if you don't. Oh no, it does. It's all simultaneous, isn't it? So it, you can attribute five range damage to one yeah, character, exactly. even if it's only yeah. got one defense. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. also, range has the thing 
Well, so there's two, there's other subtleties, right? So range, if they have a range character, they can ping you back. Yeah. Whereas this won't have that. They won't no. have the Dreadnought versus Dreadnought thing. But no. the other thing is with Dreadnought, you can just attack with a psychic and trigger all of them. Yeah. Mm. Whereas this has to attack itself. So yeah. you're putting that vulnerability out there. Um, and it doesn't have the best defensive stats, although it has good attacking stats. And it's not that expensive to field. So there's reasons why you'd want to choose between one or the other for various things. But this mm. is a nice little pocket of um, design space. This is the best one so far. Yes, I would definitely agree with that. I Good. think if I had to buy it for six, I wouldn't be that happy with it. But Hopeable makes it viable. Yeah. <laughs> you're a poet, James, and the you're motto for this not set. aware of it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's six. are in draft, though. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Wow. Six? I, I would buy this <laughs> for six. That's all right. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty likely that in any draft you do in this set, you're going to have access to the Dark Phoenix Global, aren't you? So mm. you're going to better buy it for, for cheaper, probably. So it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. A tick for Cyclops. Um, James, let's move on to our old friend, Dave, Dave Kenneth. Uh, Dave Ken, Shi'ar Civil War is a six cost shield with the Shi'ar and villain affiliations, a max die one, which the others have not been. Uh, while Dave Ken is active, opposing character dice with purchase cost of three or less lose their abilities and are free to field. Oof. Um, this might well be one of the best cards in the set, possibly. <laughs> um, yeah. Mostly Ma- Zombie Magneto from, was yeah. it from Age of Ultron? Is that what it was from? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. yeah I think so. Um, except you get that extra thing of, of gifting <laughs> gifting their fielding cost to your opponent, which is nice. <laughs> so I think that's, 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 yeah, that's, that's, that's so a nice way of it? sort of sal- salting the wound. <laughs> um, yes, very good make makes a mockery it's, it's gonna you know your opponent's gonna have to have an answer to that quite likely i suspect for sure uh so yes very good i will it's say brilliant. that it's not quite as powerful as the, the that first ability the zombie magneto do you think this is meta relevant now this this one now yeah where it where we are kind of I think it's probably equally meta relevant as Zombie Magneto was because Zombie Magneto didn't see masses of play because I think I think I'm right in saying is that that came into a half elf bard environment where that was a four and having stuff that blanked. Yeah, but I will say that Zombie Magneto irrelevant. did take care of Shriek, yeah. Dwarf Wizard, yeah, um, Elf Thief. There were loads of Guy Gardner was a win condition, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering whether we have that same. I mean, I suppose it stops Danny. Well, we've got a lot of things. I mean, but my, okay, my main thinking is that Typhoid Mary, Typhoid Mary is a four cost, right? Yes. Yeah. And also yeah, Pip true. the Troll and Spider Man, which are yeah, good removal options we have. I don't think we had that same amount of removal. No. Mm. But then I suppose there is a lot of thing. I mean, hope is one example to mention there again hope siren we should have oh, some yeah. sort of klaxon shouldn't we really every time mm. we mention hope um although it probably would irritate people to um no end but um i suppose you've got you mentioned danny moonstar you've got all little things like um eddie guerrero and the other one that switches off the globals from Richard horn Richard horn thank you you've got gazer drax drax yeah drax is three cost of course yeah there's a, I mean, the course there from this set, which is really strong, obviously, that gives Overcrush. Well, now, I, I actually, maybe if you're running, I was just thinking about... Moira, thinking about Mystique, that, Black uh, Widow. Yeah, that Cyclops team slash the Venerable Dreadnought team. Mm. Mm. This isn't a bad one to stop that. Yeah, stop the Black Widow. Um, yeah. Turk Barrett gets done again. <laughs> oh, poor old Turk. Turk. <laughs> Can't catch a break. But yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, interesting. It'll be Oscar. interesting to see how much kind of play this has Oscar yeah. it, is, it is true that the top three pre- win cons prior to this set are unaffected because I'm assuming it doesn't do action dice right yeah character that's dice that's right yeah mm-hmm. yeah so but the, 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 the tokens lose their ability they can't that's true one. they can't force a block that's anymore. true there's still 10 tens though I mean yeah. ooh <laughs> but yeah but then you can't you can't give them over crush oh uh, get, you can gifted abilities no, are unaffected by unaffected by zombie. Oh, so the ruling was so, the opposite. I, I thought it was. Okay. Yeah. 
I think they ruled it one way and then they changed their mind yeah. because there was a, there was a few yeah, moments yeah. where he could have been a contender. I remember that meme. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Know your D- DM memes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so David Kenneth, Dave, coming at it. he's good once again. Yeah. He's good. I, I feel like he his relevance to the meta will depend upon how things kind of move on with the launch of this expansion because if we get to a situation where there are quite a lot of people using two and three costs then you'll probably see a bit more of this coming well to there's top. hope of course there hope is hope for three costs yeah, there's isn't always hope. <laughs> so that, yeah, exactly. that's quite relevant i mean this yeah. is prime silgar bishop clayface turn mm. two yeah, yeah nice <laughs> yeah Purchase that's right spread. yeah it's because shield yeah. So you could. This is the one. Uh, this is, this the, is one, the one, guys. <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> so what is it? <laughs> Your opponent's Lines playing hope. Push. You just plop that yeah. down. Still guard. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> it's nice to have a yeah hard counter to that. I suppose inset. Mm. Even though uh, hope is an inset. Oh, he also he also counters the rare bishop. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. And and the silver. <laughs> yeah. Lest we forget. <laughs> How could we? Um. Good. Well, it's been a card since we've had an Xavier's Dream, so let's have another one. Peter, Iceman is back yet again. Yes. Uh, Forecasts bolt character with the X-Men affiliation. He has the Foundry keyword, and uh, while you have a sidekick die active, Iceman's attack is equal to his defense. Uh, yeah, I mean, it turns him into a 4-6-6, six, six, which is pretty good for a forecast. Hmm. It's just stats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, there, there may be with uh, one of the basic actions we'll mention later. Uh, but, you know, you, ha- you have a Becky with better stats for four. So. Yeah. And Overcrush. And Overcrush. Over <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's all relative. Uh, and this, the, no, I suppose that level two is particularly exciting, though, in terms of stats. Six six on level it'll two. He'll turn to us at one six six, yeah. Yeah. Which is decent for four costs. Not amazing, is it? Yeah. Um, there was a time when that would have been pretty good, but there was a time. Yeah, inflation has just gone out of control. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're dreaming of the past when yeah. he used to be relevant. <laughs> absolutely well yeah so i don't think i think <laughs> I james like how we didn't even mention the founder keyword yeah, yeah I, I forgot but there's there, there's not enough interaction with the founders there really I, isn't it's a bit disappointing it that. worthwhile no it's only the one beast that's pretty good with other founders but i still wouldn't combine this one with that i'd just no. buy more beasts and i don't feel like there's much prospect of the founder keyword being really expanded for any time soon, for sure, because I really don't think they, they tend not. Well, they do sometimes, but they do. They don't tend to propagate keywords between different um, IPs, do they generally? I don't know. I think they implied at some point that we could also get like Avengers with founder. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that would be pretty cool. But then, and, uh, I mean, that's uh, more Marvel, isn't it? Bit- it's going to be a bit of hero, um, heroic type. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it is a cool possibility for an ability, but they kind of not very huh. good. haven't followed through it. No, yeah. no. There's well, enough. Ben, why don't, we do, why don't we move on to something better in the form of Jubilee, Ben? Oh, uh, dear. Okay. <laughs> Jubilee, X-Men, field leader, four-cost bolt with the X-Men affiliation. While Jubilee is active, when you feel the character die, she is annoying. <laughs> uh, when Jubilee is active when you feel this character die she deals one damage to your opponent and one damage to target character die yes ouch reprint of the human torch I hate this card it's the worst card <laughs> why do you hate it I just hate that stupid human torch it's so bloody annoying just like <laughs> ping I ping you I just luckily roll a bunch of characters mm. ping 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 just <laughs> do something subtle do something clever don't just sit there with your stupid Jubilee and do nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like people who just sit there with their stupid rare colossus and uh, yeah, it is. do two you, damage. These colossus are dead in two turns. This is like torturous. <laughs> like this is the definition of just like death by a thousand. It's death by a thousand cuts, isn't it? It's just yeah, like, it is. 
It this is. is the card. I, this is a card, actually, that made me think that the game was really thematic. I think we've talked about this before, maybe. The Human Torch. Like, just oh, felt like yeah. you were just, like, kind of chucking fireballs. Yes, yeah, we've had this conversation. Which works for the Jubilee, yeah. <laughs> Jubilee's pretty annoying as well, so that's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, really strong card, obviously. Um, we don't have a green Goliath to, like, pair with her, no. thankfully. No. Yeah. Well, not yet, anyway. Not yet. No. <laughs> but, um, Who knows? Yeah. It's really good, really strong. People will make teams around this. People will already use the Thor, which is very similar. Mm. There's differences between the two. Um, choices are um, relevant to which you choose, but you can also put both in. So yeah, or, really strong. Or this and Hope copying her. Oh, yep. wow. Yeah. I think, yeah. The, the, I think we may have mentioned, but this, this and Hope is to Thor maybe what uh, Godcatcher is to Master Mold or something. We, we talked about the Difficulty of buying a six or seven cost versus mm. a three yeah, pick a your four. poison, right? Mm. Yeah, what feels best for you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Indeed. if you have two, if you have two different characters, you've got to feel both of them, which can be a bit of a pain in the neck. <laughs> but um, at least in this case, if you get one of them active, then you can still do your thing, albeit in a slightly more reduced way. Yeah, that so, two, yeah. four, three face on Jubilee is a bit of a pain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. It's always been a thorn in the side that. But it feels a bit better on a four cost, right? Because it's going to sit there. Yeah. Yeah. You Whereas for other Jubilees, generally, you kind of were doing stuff with them. Yeah. And she's not affected by Dave. So obviously, that's good because she's a four cost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Hop is. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. So another tick for Jubilee. That is a strong card. And James, we are back to you with Kitty Pride. Uh, Kitty Pride, experienced leader. Four cost mask X Men affiliation while Kitty is active. Each of your X Men character dies get plus one attack and plus one defense. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. Nothing to say about that. I'm not going to pay for for that ability. Hmm. I like this again. I think it's a really subtle. Well, subtle. I think it's really good. Just useful utility. Die obviously not in high competitive play. No. Mm. But thematic play, um, just regular casual. You want to build some X Men teams? Why yeah. not? Um, yeah. yeah, it's very similar to the Cyclops we saw from um, X Men Forever, right? Or X Men yeah. box set. Yeah. yeah. He, he also made them. He also made them one cheap to field, right? I think so. But he was mm. more expensive. He was five cost, so I I like I like this kind of set affiliation. I think it's useful and necessary to have in the game. But yeah, it's not exciting. Yeah, no. I mean, of course, you can hope you can hope her and get you were, plus you two A and plus two B. <laughs> I mean, it's not. I there are other things you'd rather copy. Yeah. Then you're making your hopes five five, right? Yeah. Which yeah, I hate that. that's not terrible. No, exactly, but. Um, there are probably stronger things that we've already discussed in this show even that you might want to use hope on rather than Kissy Pride. So, uh, yeah, Peter, which, yeah, uh, let's so move on to Lelandra, who's not an ex-person, but uh, Lelandra is still a very strong card. I think we might discover, Peter. Yes, Lelandra Medestrix, a five-cost shield character with the Shi'ar affiliation, and she says, while Lelandra is active, your opponent must pay two life to use an action die or global ability. Oh dear! Oh, we have seen that. Uh, <laughs> it's, it may may not be quite as relevant in as in the Professor X days, but there are still yeah. a lot of good globals in this set. Oh yeah, and in modern at the moment. Oh yeah. So this is going to hurt if you face oh, this. Oh yeah. Especially oh, yeah. if you're playing like an Iceman team or something. Oh yes! <laughs> I'll do two damage. To, I'll pay two life to do you two damage. Yeah, yeah, that could get <clears throat> that could get painful pretty quickly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, she is. Yeah. So it's a reprint, effectively, isn't it, of the old? What's he called? The Jinzo thing? Trap Destroyer. Jinzo, thank you. Oh, actually, yeah. it wasn't Trap Destroyer. I can't remember the subtitle. Jinzo, complete asshole. 
<laughs> I think it was Trap Destroyer, wasn't it? Or something like that. Yeah, yeah it sounds possible. familiar. Yeah. That sounds right, yeah. Hope Destroyer. Um, yeah, Hope Destroyer, <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously one cheaper. And it's a shield. So, you know, Silgar, Rare Bishop, Clayface yeah. shenanigans are on yeah, with this Let card. Let begin. <laughs> exactly. I think there's, well, I mean, clearly there's some room for a control team, shield, control shield team. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> if you get a win condition, um, will you be able to get both this and Deacon out and will that be enough to stall your opponents? I think the thing with Jinzo, though, was... You were so consistently needing to use two or three globals a yeah. turn. Yeah. Whereas in this meta, you don't necessarily, you don't do it with such regularity. No. No, that was kind of once you got your pieces in a row. That was in a, a PXG meta, wasn't it? Where people were yeah. maybe using it two or three times on a turn to prep dice. Yeah, and you just yeah. couldn't fall behind in that kind of churn cycle, otherwise mm. you were dead. Hmm. But still, yeah. it really hurts with like uh, static field globals and such. If you have to pay two life every time, that adds up. Yeah, it does. Yeah, no, I, it definitely will. I mean, globals are my favorite part of the game, as we've said many times before. This is why we hate these cards. <laughs> we do. <laughs> but are people going to go out of their way to play them? I mean, I think actually I someone could do pretty well at a tournament if they can get this card out quick enough, because I think it will surprise people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those things yeah. where I think it could do well if not everyone's running it. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I remember facing Jinzo once in, in a Yu Gi Oh draft, and I was like, oh, it's not that important. And then I found that I used more globals than, than I thought, and yeah. it killed me. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it, very strong. It mounts up pretty quickly, doesn't it? The cost of that. Yeah. I mean, the only the only thing, obviously, that is different now is we have a shed load of removal options um, for both Dave, Ken, and this that yeah. aren't generally affected by the either of these cards. You know, in the form of some of the cards we mentioned: Spider Man, um, Pip the Troll, Pip. Becky. Yeah. Um, you know, all these things. Storm, obviously, that we uh, talked about in the last show, the rare. Um, yeah. Uh, there's there's loads of removal uh, all over the place, so I'm not sure if this is if investing in these well, cards is going to be other that bad. About the Jinzo, right, and the PXG in particular. The PXG yeah. was all done on your opponent's turn. Yeah. So actually, the removal options for your opponent's turn were very limited. Yeah. Because all you can do is globals, right? Yeah. Mm. Whereas in this meta, you kind of get all your globals out of the way on your turn. So you mm. can easily have a gazer or something, field the gazer. Yeah. Um, intimidate kind it of off. Intimidate yeah. this off and then do all yeah. your globals then. So, yeah. Yeah. So it is cheaper, but I don't know if it will be quite as. I like that. I like that. I guess I like the fact that it's better back in the. I don't know. Do I like this back in the meta? It's an it's a interesting card to have around. It's an interesting puzzle to work around, I think, if you, if yeah. you, if somebody else does play. It. I mean, it's better in some... than Wrecker. I mean, I would much like prefer it to Wrecker, yeah, which exactly. is shut off Global's yeah. full stop. Exactly. Sure. exactly. I like the idea that I can pay a couple of life yeah. now, and when yeah. do I pay that life? When t to like burn and when not to? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'd much rather face this than like um, the rogue that adds the cost of Globals. Sure. That basically means you can't use them because they're too exp they become too expensive. Um, whereas obviously in this case you can just choose if you want to pay if you want to do it and pay yeah. your life then hey you know you can take that chance or you can you know you can pay that cost but yeah is that rogue or Jean Grey Jean Grey yeah apologies Jean Grey yeah um, so yeah could be pretty oppressive and I suppose it will make the game go quicker if if, if yep. people are Don't gleefully know, throwing yeah. life down the toilet to <laughs> <laughs> to use global <laughs> abilities <laughs> Life then, is a uh, resource. It is. Yeah. Yeah. We just got to ride it. Oh, no, that's a roller coaster. Life is a roller coaster. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, tenuous. <yeah. laughs> All right, Ben. Magneto. Ble no, Lilandra. No, Kitty Pride. No, where are we? I'm completely lost. Magneto. 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 Yes. Dream. Thank you. No. Magneto Xavier's Dream. <laughs> <laughs> no, founder Not of the Brotherhood, Xavier's Dream. Six yeah. Cost Mars. <laughs> It's a Brotherhood of Evil Mutant affiliation. While well, I mean, Magneto is active when one of your Brotherhood character dice is KO'd, KO target opposing character die. Uh, you pay a mask once per turn during your turn. 
If you have a dice in your prep area, you may draw no a dice. Di- if you don't have a dice, sorry, in your prep area, you may draw a die and place in your prep area. Mm. So Vinless Pack Global. Yeah. This is uh, actually speaking of removal on your opponent's turn. Mm. Uh, this is a nice option using the Dark Phoenix Global. It you is, can carry yeah. something to carry something on your opponent's yeah, turn. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um other uses for this, I guess, if you're going back to that kind of way to blow up the field, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of a reprint of the Talisman of Ultimate Evil, right? The action. Mm, mm. Which was kind of cool, um, but didn't really see play. Yeah. At least it's while active. I don't know. I, I don't know. The global's useful. This might be one of the ones. Would you run this over the other ones? The other Magnetos? Yeah, in this set. for the glo- If you're using the global, you're going to run it for... Something are you bringing mm. this one or are you bringing the other ones? If, if you're not playing a Brotherhood team, then you're not going to buy it either way, so it doesn't matter. But if yeah. you are playing a Brotherhood team, I would go with this. I like this one. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's better than the uncommon, which your Brotherhood character dice can only be blocked by two or more character dice? Mm. And it gives you more fun. As well. More fun for me. I prefer I prefer knocking things out. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I suppose if you are taking this and the. Um, Dark Phoenix Global. There's also, isn't there a, uh, what's her name? Mystique that yeah. does something when she's knocked out. Yeah. Although, actually, interestingly, yeah. though, that it doesn't work particularly well with the Dark Phoenix Global. Because it Global, does something I mean, in prep area. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could you could prep first and then start going stuff. Yeah, right. You could, but you don't want to. But you don't really want to prep unless you bought something. Generally speaking, the yeah. kind of bag flow is five. Mm. <clears throat> I think I'd run the rare. Personally. Yeah, I think the rare is good. That that the one the team watch that spins target opposing character die to an energy face of your opponent's choice. Yeah, it means you can just remove stuff, doesn't it? And um, but this one is fun. Cheaper. Removal on your opponent's turn is not easy to come by. So no, this is no, definitely no. a choice. Yeah, true. He's sort of middling, isn't he? I think in this in this little review I think probably yeah he's not great he's not terrible he's okay yeah um now James we get to move on to this card is called Master Mold and I think this one never heard of it might be quite never good it. read it out to us please and we will decide it. Endless Sentinels six cost shield shield note villain yes. affiliation <laughs> when fielded when Master Mold attacks or when Master Mold is KO'd, place a Sentinel token with five attack and five defense into the field zone. Yes. Um, to clarify, it has been clarified twice now, but that is three, up to three possible tokens per turn. Per turn. Uh, so when he's fielded, yes. If he attacks, yes. And if he's KO'd. Yes, mm. <laughs> and it adds up pretty quickly. I think we, we've spoken about this. I don't know how much more we have to say about it. Yeah, it's uh, really good. Yeah, you're not. And Ben fight. doesn't like tokens, and, <laughs> and that's all there is to say. <laughs> well, other than Silgar and uh, Bishop, exactly. You mm. can buy this turn too, right? Yeah, easy peasy. With a bit of <laughs> with some Bishop Silgar Clayface shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, Silgishop synergy. Exactly. It's the new hotness. Master Sweet Bishop. In the nations. <laughs> <laughs> or Bilgar, maybe. Exactly, <laughs> Bilgar. No, this is really good. And, you know, if you can get it in rotation, aside from the horrible fielding three round. fielding cost, um, the tokens can start to mount up pretty quickly. And people might say, oh, there are only tokens, but, you know, they can be intimidated off. But how many are you going to intimidate off on any one turn? Um, yeah, yeah they, they, if, if your opponent yeah. makes three tokens a turn, it's gonna yeah. be hard to intimidate. There are only that. stats. <laughs> yeah, but there are other cards coming up that you can combine with this that might spread them abilities. That they can yeah, run. sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. He is the. Yeah, I mean, they need to they need to redo that Deacon Zombie Magneto rule to make sure that given abilities don't work. <laughs> Yeah. That would modify this. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Master Mold. I mean, for the avoidance of any doubt, I mean, this is probably the chase card of the whole set, isn't it? In terms of the one that everybody wants and are going to find out. Do you know the Jubilee? Yes, I do. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think especially initially, people are going to be very excited about playing with this card. Yeah, people like big beasties to smash face with. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really. I mean, I am down on tokens. I don't really like, but I don't really like Godcatcher, who's like no. the second best win condition. Yeah. Um, in the current meta, so yeah. yeah, this is really good, really, really strong. It'd be really interesting actually to see how Master Mold and Godcatcher end up facing off against each other. You know, because obviously Master Mold is way more expensive at six. Godcatcher is only three, but you need to, you know, you I like this way better than Godcatcher. I think yeah, it's much I, stronger. I agree. Personally. Yeah, I think it's stronger too. But it'd be interesting to see how it faces off in in actual play. Uh, we we await to see. But yeah, Master Mold, very very good. Um, Peter, Mister Sinister, please. Yes, Mr. Sinister Biologist, six cost bolt with the villain affiliation. He says, while Mr. Sinister is active, prevent non combat damage dealt to your other character dice. And he has also a global, this pay three, target character die gains overcrush. Right. Yeah, that, that is a pretty good global. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. It's, uh, the first part's good as well. It is. I yeah, but would you buy a six cost for that? Depends. I mean, it directly counters the cyclops we just talked about. It does, yes. So I mean, kind if, of you, cool if you have it for the global, you might consider actually buying it if the need calls for it. But yeah, if you're opponent from then we dreadnought. Yeah, this is like a good utility. Yeah, for sure. But then, if you're running this global, you're probably going faster than your opponent anyway. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know how often you'd buy him, but the the global is really good. Yeah, uh, especially it's expensive. If you, it's expensive, but you know if you're running, maybe God catch, God catches, yeah. You all of a sudden have ten ten overcrushers. Do you think this is better than um, using kind of ways to give God catcher overcrush? It like the Psylocke, for example, or the um, under surveillance, which just makes it unblockable. Mm, it's it's at global speed, so that that does make it more reliable. But it's expensive, mm. so that is a bit of a problem. But you might yeah, you can do both. If 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 you fail to roll your um, under surveillance, that's two two yeah, energy. Two energy. Yeah. You only need to add <laughs> one to give over crush. So. Yeah, and then with Jerry Lawler global going around over crush is probably better than unblockable. Oh, yeah, if you're does. going that route, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine getting um, a a Godcatcher token out with ten ten, with a cable that doubles the attack <laughs> of everything else, and then getting a force block? So they're definitely. Oh no, Mudge, you can't do. You have to cable us to attack, do doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you can't force it, but unless you use, I suppose, you, unless you use the Booker T um, action, and then you can select the blockers. Um, yeah, and then you can use Jerry Lawler to double the double. I mean, if you're doing all that, you, you know, can do whatever the hell you want. Damage. <laughs> just take my cards and just walk off. Yeah. Oh yes, but wouldn't it be um, nice to pull it off? Interesting though. I think that's kind of like a little nice puzzle again with the. If we do get global oppression, how are you going to get this much energy? Mm. Yeah. Consistently, uh, you have to pay four for it, then it's oof. Yeah, <laughs> pay three yeah. life, uh, pay two life and three energy. <laughs> Go for yeah. it. If you win the game, yeah, it does. Then if you running. if you can it's stop that, then can they get that kind of flow going? If you can get, it will depend on how early you can get Lilander out or Jean Grey out or Pin mm. Patrol, mm. Mm. Global Tax, well, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Your Global is cost plus I, four. Pay uh, six I'm, energy and two life. Go for it. <laughs> I mean, that's where you want to be, though, right? And you want to have kind of. Mm. Fast meta, but also someone can control enough to stop you. Mm. There, there just needs to be a way. Yeah, the control players need to work out a way to be quick enough. Yeah, and that's the issue. It feels like a lot of the big control in this set is expensive, isn't it? But yeah. well, I'm just thinking that if you're trying to use a Miss Sinister Global plus a Force Block Global plus a Jerry Lawler Global yeah. plus the um thingy the stop static field global yeah that's four globals right there that's eight gladiator they have to pay <laughs> we can't use gladiator and jerry law run the same turn no that's true you can't yeah sure 
Maybe you start stacking those things up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then, and then, then you still have to get energy for all that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I, this global, this might fade away. Do you think that going wide is the new Overcrush? Like, is Overcrush, because Overcrush had huge amounts of popularity due to, well, Becky and mm. whatever his name is, mm. the, the ringside commentators. I think? mean, people are coming for Becky's throne, right? <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Is Becky going to just let them come up and take it? I don't. I, don't, I personally don't think so. But yeah. no, It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I think this global is nicely costed. You know, three to mm-hmm. give something over cost. The uh, crush is pretty good, I think, because it's not mm. too cheap. You know, I think if it was two, would be far too cheap. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think so. And it's... four would just put it out of meta use. Yeah. 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 A la Ric Flair Global. There's no mm-hmm. much cost yeah. for. No one ever uses that. Hey, Ric Flair Global plus this plus Jerry Lawler. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Seven and eight. Yeah. Eight. I'm sure. or, or you get the, the Xanathar with Spark that, is, that you use a Global for free. Oh, interesting. Mm. Mm. Only nice. once per phase, though. Yeah. And you have to buy, you have to pay six Absolutely for Xanathar. Right. No, no, it's Silgar. No, 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 it's Silgar. Oh, right. Okay. Silgar is the new hero. Silgar is the new meta. I like that Silgar spot. Silgar is the, M- the MPV of the new meta. <laughs> the MPV? The multi yeah, member of parliament. F. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, so that's a very good global and a decent ability on the Mr. Sinister character there, um, rounding off the four different globals that he's got across all of his different versions. We'll have another discussion, I'm sure, at another time, which one we like the best. But we won't do that now because we'll move on to Mystique. And Ben, I think we're back to you again. That's for, yeah, the Mr. Sinister ability is really good as well. We probably should have talked more about that. But anyway, Mystique, she walks among us. Three cost mask, brotherhood and villain. Team watch, spin target, opposing character, die to an energy face of your opponent's choice. Uh, gosh, Mystique stats are just a problem, aren't they? 2 one, one top level is just horrendous. Yeah. Uh, this is really good, though, I suppose, if you're running a Brotherhood or a villain. I mean, do you think this would have been a real problem a couple of uh, years ago with the villain meta the way it was, which yes, you know, Scarlet sure. Witch? Yes. That would be really fun. Mm. Yes. Like oh. another villain ladies team would have been like really strong. As it is, this is... Collector, just so. Yeah, the collector, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that would have been funny. Yeah. The villain on your turn. I mean, actually, though, we still have the collector. Have the collector, yeah. And we, we have Parasite, which is interesting as well. Mm. Uh, the three-cost one, which, like, people don't play, but sucks up people uh, opposing characters' energy. Sorry, yes. energy. Ability. Abilities. Ability, yeah. yeah. Which is, I mean, yeah. Do do you think that that collector is just not good enough? I don't think, but this is not a bad one to have alongside it. <sighs> yes, that's the one that you that has the awaken ability, isn't it? Yeah, Where you can. Feel yeah, you something. can feel the character. Yeah, mm. that's three or less. Which is good. Yeah. just three or less. Yeah, and that parasite is a really good card that um, has not seen enough play. I don't think. Yeah, no, it hasn't. No, because um, sure. the yeah. two cost is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, two bosses is awesome. But I'm just thinking, actually, with the Master Mold, if you have a Master Mold active and your opponent fields the Parasite, they can become a Master Mold and put two of their own tokens out. Boom. True. While they attack and then, yeah, get killed. Um, Very nice. Anyway, I think this is a good ability. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how often me spinning... I, them, when they use Pit the Troll, and I have to spin it to a single energy. Yeah. It's very annoying. Mm. So at least you get the kind of, at least I get double energy or choose the energy I want. Yeah. 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 Then you can have a little combo with this and um, the uh, the Landra, where you kind of give them a choice of what energy they want. So they have to use a global ability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean? I mean, it does it does um, go quite nicely with the super rare Magneto that we just talked about, doesn't it? That um, Yeah. Because you can obviously field her, you can use her team watch ability because they're both Brotherhood characters. But then if you KO her using Nia Law or Dark Phoenix or whatever, then you get to also KO another character die. So, you know, you can get a sort of almost a two for one really there, isn't it? You can KO something when you field her and 
well, you can spin something down when you field her and then KO something when you knock her out. So, mm. um, yeah, aside from a horrible fielding cost on three, but it's seven. not fielding her, right? It's it's fielding, yeah, kind if, of if she's active character. and you field another character with the same affiliation, yeah. Oh, excuse me, yeah, sorry, I'm uh, misinterpreting. Yes, thank you. So, you well, can't do that. Um, Complete scratch there. villains are there. Isn't there a, a dark beast with the, the uh, Brotherhood affiliation or something? It doesn't have to be brother, it could be villain, though. Yeah, yeah it could just be villain. be villain. But if you're going with the Magneto, then it needs to be brother. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. All right, let me just limit it to villain and brotherhood. There's a Mystique doesn't work. Yeah, dark beast and a mastermind. It just has mm. to infiltrate. Mm. Yeah, that mastermind's terrible. <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> Dark Beast, yeah, corrupt. Mm. That's fine. The villains are probably where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Like you say, Ben, I mean, obviously this is not such a villain-heavy meta now, is it, in terms of um, no. stuff that we've got? I mean, uh, Poison Ivy is one of the ones that sort of stands out. She's a villain, isn't she, I think? Yeah. But... Well, there's Kree soldiers at two costs there, okay? Mm. Yeah, Arnim Zola, true. there's no okay Arnim Zola. Oh, crumbs, yeah. And you can also grant her a different affiliation with Avengers ID card or you could. That's interesting. Global. Oh yeah. So then you have more options. Yeah, that's true. Is that um the radicalization global? We're going to come to that, I suppose. Yeah. What energy type is that? Shield. Shield. Okay, I was thinking for the Turk Barrett uh, Iceman team because mm. she's a master. That might be a nice kind of slot on as a removal mm. option. Yeah. Oh, I reckon Turk Barrett's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not about the Turk Barrett anymore anyway, so do you believe? Yeah, in a world of pain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true, actually, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that Mystique's pretty interesting. Um, James, uh, why don't you give us Psylocke? Psylocke, advanced telekinetic combatant. Five cost mass with the X-Men affiliation. When fielded, re-roll up to two opposing characters. Note characters. Yes. Not dice. Oh, no. Each each die that does not roll a character goes to your opponent's used part. Psylocke deals two damage to your opponent for each die move. So exactly that. Uh, this was discussed at some length yes. in the the recent rulings. Mm. Uh, it's exactly the same text as the old Windrider Storm from AVX, yeah. but doesn't work the same way because things have moved on. Yeah, um, I reckon they just you know copy and pasted the text and <laughs> then realized that um Wait. things had moved on and mm. then decided to just brass it out <laughs> and say <laughs> right okay fine it's characters it's character so the point is that um they um anticipated any questions by saying that in, because it doesn't say two opposing character dice it says two opposing characters you actually get to roll all copies of mm. those characters which you select if that if your opponent has multiples in the field um which raised the question of whether that would apply to psychics because that would be really strong mm. if your opponent happens to have four psychics and you select that as one of your characters yes they're very likely to come up energy and each one does two damage um and the answer was no you can't so <laughs> haha <laughs> so you can't pick psychics but if they had three copies of beast in the field for example and you selected beast of one of the characters they'd have to re-roll all the beasts yes. yeah um really if it had been psychics then it would have been super strong yeah. as it stands sure. um i just go with a storm really if you're gonna if you're gonna hope it anyway i mean it's still very strong isn't it this well for sure yeah for sure i mean yeah. I, I either hope storm like the seven cost rare or Becky, I would prefer over this. But it's certainly good, no question. Yeah, a good card. Pip's better. Pip is better because mm. it's guaranteed mm. removal, isn't it? That? Yeah. But then Pip doesn't do the damage. Doesn't do damage though. Yeah. No. That storm used to be a bit of a win commission. I mean, a, a slow one, but yeah, yeah, with the sidekicks. Yeah. yeah. Being removed, it becomes less useful. Yeah. Or reliable damage. Yeah. Can you even pick a psychic? I don't you can't. Yeah, so it's much less reliable. Yeah. The storm where you could pick psychics get, kind of gave you that option to, to make right. it into a win condition. This doesn't have that. No. Yeah. I mean, the, the, at a high level competitive play, you very rarely have multiple copies of the same character. No, that's right. Yeah. Almost ever. I mean, it, the, 
there's very little point most of the time. Yeah. No, not unless you're really, really trying to lock something out with mm. like multiple copies of Drax or something. Or yeah, or Spider Man sure. having a couple of Spider Men out. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Or a couple of Dannys, maybe. Yeah, I know. I can see. I can think of someone who might have more than one Danny in the field. But I tend to not. I tend to try and roll the other ones as uh, mm. energy, just for the mask balloons. Mm. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ideally, but yeah. Psylocke is another one that could have been a contender for a few brief moments until the ruling <laughs> came along. I mean, maybe we should stay with this because the next two are. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> let's just pump pump through, pump through oh, the yeah, next two, and let's go on to the basic action. Go on, Peter, Rogue. Yeah, we have Rogue Strength Absorption, a forecast mass capture with the X Men radiation. She has energized. Target character die has zero attack this turn. Uh, yeah. yeah, that is weird. Really? Weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, if it was it a was, two cost. Yeah, if it was right. a two cost, it would be pretty cool because then you could b- combine it with the art. Nemesis global, yeah, mm-hmm. and KO stuff. But for a forecast, nah. Count me out. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, this is easily the worst superhero, isn't it? The set. Oof! Mm-hmm. Wow, it's got some. I mean, this is, I think, the first um, outright bad one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a bit harsh. The ability's yeah. not bad. It's just forecast is way too high for it. Yeah, yeah. It is really bad. No one's ever, ever, ever going to play this. No. You're forgetting about the super ne- super rare Ronan, which is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one that you just invented. What is yeah, that? <laughs> oh, good. Does it, what, when fielded, lose the game. Is that yeah, Ronan? When fielded, <laughs> die. <laughs> yeah. They're just so much better. Like the Black Widow energizer is so much better than this. Mm. Oh, yeah. And only sure. cost half. Four cost energize. Four cost just to try and roll it on a double energy. No. Yeah. I will say. Yeah. There is a cool team. Um, Rob Petsford of Breath Weapon X played in the double the, the um, two team takedown tournament. Yeah, with this really cool energize mm. using Adam Warlock as mm. a win condition team, mm. 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 Um, which basically you could use. Adam Warlock lets you if you spend dice on energize dice. Um, during it, then you can re-roll them and use their energize ability. Mm. So if you can, so what he was doing was basically he had Adam Warlock out. You could clay face the rogue in, for example, on your opponent's turn during the global window. Spend that energy, then roll the rogue, and then you can make their Godcatcher have zero attack, maybe. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or the thing that's uh-huh. about to do whatever the overcrushy damage. So maybe it's allowing you to do stuff off turn, right? That's yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then with um with whatever and Oscar making this two cost. Mm. Maybe it has a space on that team. So actually, yeah. okay, but you're just going to roll it on the bloody two, four, five face. Oh, hey, <laughs> that's just horrid, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, that's a nice. Um, that's it's a, nice a really good thought. team. People should check out if you can yeah. check out his video. It's very interesting um, space he's kind of worked out to control your opponent during their turn. Yeah, yeah. Right. They also well, have the Typhoid Mary, uh, the promo one on there, the violent tendencies, because I, I think. Rod Travel, Ryan, was playing a similar team and he had that a type of Mary that gives your uh, sidekicks plus two attack and overcrush. Mm. I would energize. No, no, he was just basically he was just basically using the Black Widow yeah. the two cost one with energize and the six cost Doctor Strange uh, to remove it. Um, to just spin out your stuff on your turn. Yeesh. Cool. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good actually with the Oscar to make the like, Doctor Strange cheaper so it's mm. more affordable. Mm. And then I had a clay face and he had a clay face. Oh, so the man. amount of energy he could spend and bring in, it was just, yeah, it was bad. Bad news bears. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the double clay face, that really adds up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can bring them in and spend them, bring them in and spend them again. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you have collector and global and then whatever else global to spend his masks. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes this card almost usable. <laughs> um, should we round off our super airs with Wolverine and I think it's you again Ben Wolverine Xavier's no tough for the kids five <laughs> S-man affiliation uh, regenerate uh, then a burst face which is level one and level two 
If you have at least three different active X-Men character dice, Wolverine can't be spun to an energy face or re-rolled by your opponent. Yeah. Has a prep global as well, which I like a lot. This yeah. is a... Uh, okay, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, well, do you to... know what makes it terrible? Go that on. If you have at least three different active X-Men. If you just got rid of that part... Yeah. And then Wolverine can't be spun to an edgy face or re-rolled by your opponent. Uh, and and it's only on two of his faces. Out of the yeah. Them. It's, it's generally pan. It's too yeah. far, isn't it? Yeah, it's but really If, it, if the ability was, it just couldn't be spun to energy. Mm. That'd be useful. And it costs yeah. five. Why yeah. would I pay five to counter, let's say, Becky, which would cost five, rather than I just buy Becky? Buy <laughs> Becky, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get it, but... It feels like too expensive, too many the rare restrictions good, on it. it? We like the rare. Almost. The rare was better. Yeah. The rare has a place <laughs> in my heart, at least. This one they're they're both, both worth it for the global. The thing I think with Wolverine is the rare has awakened, so if you're not running a spin-up, spin-down global of some mm. type, mm. then that's functionally useless, whereas yeah. this one at least is useful in, well... Oh, very <laughs> edge case. <Yeah. laughs> oh, it, it does have regenerate. Yeah. It does cost five, whereas the other one... Oh, five. I guess no. also three different active X-Men means it has to be Two three different... Different active X Men. You can't have just no two beasts um, and a Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But Wolverine yeah. could be one of the three. Yeah, you would. Wolverine, think so, yeah. Wolverine yeah. Beast, and but then all, all that would happen is your opponent would just spin out one of the other yeah. ones, yeah. and then do your Wolverine <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so you yeah, know but that I mean, it might like... save you from one Spider Man hit, for example. Oh, maybe right? once, yeah. But I mean, his defense is crap anyway, so. Yeah, he's really not that good. He's a bit of a damp squib to end on, I would say. He's got too many conditions and too much, um, too many particular requirements in order to make him any good. But he's got a half decent global, which is nice. There's a question, I guess. Pip the troll spin lets you spin out two. Mm. Yeah, order. Do you have to choose both two things before you can do it? Yeah. Or could they spin out one of the things and then this one? No, no. It, it, he would be have to an, both things. Have to be an, an eligible target. Okay, yeah. okay, so there you go. Doesn't mean anything. But... You'd be safe from that. All right, well, that is all of the super airs talked about. Why don't you pick Ooh. a favorite? Ben, pick a favorite. Me? From your super I mean, airs. Yeah. They're the clear favorite, isn't that? Your love affair with the Jubilee continues. Um, no, definitely not. I think I'm going to go with Cyclops. <laughs> I think Cyclops is the most interesting. The one I was oh, like, oh, yeah. I've. I've I mean, no, so I David know. Kenneth always, but <laughs> uh, the one I'm actually excited to build a team around, the Cyclops, I think, probably. Yeah, interesting, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like ping, I like board clears, I like that kind of one hit and then I win. So yeah. This, this leads to that. Okay, James? Uh, I like the rares better, I've mm-hmm. got to say, but um, if you were going to give me one card... I'd take the master mold, but I like Dave Ken also. So, yeah. Peter, no, I don't. I don't oh. like that. Oh. Sorry, sorry, but, but they're, no. they're good, but they don't move me in the same way that some of the rares did. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I see. Peter, yeah, I would agree with James. So, oh, come on, yeah, master master master. Master. same thing. Well, but... uh, it's the super Ronin, of course. Uh, <laughs> 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 when fielded, pay twenty life. When fielded, yeah. roll this die. If it comes up character face, you win the game. If it comes up, you lose the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be down with that. <laughs> Orbital strike all over Might again. Really, playing really, against it? bloody Jubilee. All of that. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're choosing Master Mode as well, Spug, right? Well, I mean, you you are yeah, very much cool. putting words in my mouth. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, I do think he's very, very good. And I, you know, we did, we obviously did some stuff with him uh, a few months back at um, the Dice Fight XL tournament when we sort of previewed a few of these cards and we allowed people to play with them. And I, I did really enjoy playing it; it was really good. Um, so yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm in, I'm in camp master mode. I'm afraid. What is the mm-hmm. worst one then out of these? Rogue. Probably, I think know. in general these are way better as a whole average level than like the Infinity Gauntlet ones. Yeah. 
I think you're. Mm. I, think you're I, don't right. think there's, I don't think there's an awful one. I think mm. there's some ones that obviously won't see play. Yeah. Yeah. But Iceman yeah. probably the worst. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, maybe. Rogue. I think yeah. the I mean, beast. Rogue's is... good on one team. That's it. The rogue is dreadful. Mm, I, I, that, yeah. I won't disagree, but I think, I, I don't know, I'd, I'd be interested to speak, speak about, speak to Rob about that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's all of those cards. Shall we quickly rattle through the basic actions? We won't spend too much time on this because obviously some of them are even reprints and some of them we've spoken about before. Um, but James, I'm going to let you put in a bit of music and we'll move on to the basic actions. <laughs> All right, we are now on to the basic actions, and there are 16, some of which are reprints from last time, but um, shall we just get stuck right into Arch Nemesis with you, James? Oh, my word. I've got them. <laughs> yeah, okay. Arch Nemesis is a four-cost basic action. Target character die you control and target opposing character die deal damage e- to each other equal to their attack. And it has a global pair shield. Target character die has defense equal to its attack. Um, with a rogue apostrophe, it seems. Um, yeah, it's a reprint of one that was first in Amazing Spider-Man with nice art and then in Thor with awful, awful, ugly art. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it's, it's okay. I mean, the, the, the main ability is similar to Confront the Mighty, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, kind of. There's a there's a bit there's a bit more to confront the mighty. I think I prefer confront the mighty, and it's cheaper, cheaper for, yeah. for that ability. Okay. So the globals maybe the, the interesting bit. Uh, and I think we did discuss this on one of the videos. I'll put the link in the show notes, obviously. But um, this used to be really cool when there was stuff with zero attack or you know really low attack um, that you could that you could um, make the defense equal to, and either it would be straight knocked out in the case of dwarf wizard on his first side for example or you might be able to then ping it out quite easily if it had just one attack but these days a lot of the pieces have more symmetrical attack and defense so it's not quite as useful as it used to be although moira could be done in with it could it could see a <laughs> bit of play and i'm done good hey, you are done. <laughs> i loved it with the gold dragon I'll give a shout out to that gold dragon team because there were a lot of annoying things with massive defense like the collector like the blob Oh, yeah. use the global mm-hmm. and then you had the action as a backup removal option mm. yeah so mm-hmm. you could use it as to a way of reducing um, yeah, defense, defense so to something like yeah. yeah we'll see yeah. place mm-hmm. on my uh, cyclops team mm. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it could I mean, indeed it, it does make the rogue better yes it knocks stuff mm-hmm. out yeah that's right yeah. Yeah. And, and and the actual action is pretty cool with that, that one uh is Four costs is a lot. Phoenix, for it. Yes, good. is it? Is it the Phoenix mm. that, or you know, Dark Phoenix that deals damage oh, yeah. to your opponent when she's damaged? That's yeah. true. Yeah. And then if they have a God Catcher, it's like ten damage to your opponent. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that is that that becomes worth four then. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. quite, quite specific. Yeah. Yeah. And and I mean the the confront the mighty would still do the same. Yeah. Right. For yeah, two. Do, yeah. Uh, well, we're supposed to be rattling through these. That's not rattling. So let's <laughs> let's rattle a bit faster, shall we? Uh, dampening collar, Peter. All right. Four costs. Continuous. Uh, opposing character dice can't spin up. Your opponent may return an X-Men character die they control to its card to move this die from the field zone to its card. Mm-hmm. Uh, Broadly could uses. be pretty devastating if your <laughs> opponent is running an awakened team, uh, yeah. but probably is a useless card on most <laughs> yeah what a yeah awaken is all over the meta isn't it, <laughs> it is, yeah it certainly you know is. what this is though this is one of those cards where on someone when you're making a uh, tournament which is like keyword cards only yeah it's gonna be have one what this band right yeah that's right yeah <laughs> so anytime you're ever gonna see it mentioned yeah probably true so let's move on to explosion ben Forecast, deal two damage to each player and character die. You may also spend any number of bolts. Uh, for each that you do, you may deal one damage to target character die. 
Burst fa double burst face deal one additional damage to each player and character die that explosion deals damage to. This is a reprint of something from D and D the first set, right? That did lots of damage. Probably fireball or something. Yeah, it was just called fireball. Yeah, okay, sure. It's okay. It's four cost. It's okay, it's not damage. That great. It's alright. In yeah. draft. Yeah. Okay. James, greetings from Ka greetings from Krakoa. I say to you. Uh, uh, spin up each character. Each character. So presumably that means all of the duplicate dice that yeah. you happen to have in the field. Yeah. Uh, whose card has a loyalty counter? Each of your dice that spins up gets plus two attack. Oh yeah, and the meta is no doubt going to be a wash with loyalty counters as well. Um, I mean, it might be, but you don't necessarily have to have those characters active for them to be useful. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm... No, I can't really... Can't yeah, see me putting that on my team. No, but this would be brilliant. If you, if you built a, a, a loyalty counter sort of based team, it could be really cool. Fine if you built casual. a team around this card... Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a better card maybe. for loyalty counter based yes. team. Right. Yeah, That's true. Fun and casual, though. That's true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I prefer uh, Power Almighty with a sort of spinning up and not so many, not you know, no restriction of loyalty counters. And I prefer the ramp off it, to be honest. But yeah. Anyway. yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter, lab test. It's a two cost, which is nice. Uh, as continues, and you may send this die to a use pile to reroll one of the character dice in your reserve pool. Hmm. Um, uh, maybe if you're really going for that uh, energize ability, you yeah. might want to reroll one of your character dice. But most of the time, I, I it would have been nice if you could just reroll any die mm -hmm. in your reserve pool. That would mm -hmm. be pretty cool to get an extra shot yeah. at getting the yeah. results. Yeah. For just when it character says dice. character dice in the reserve pool, does that mean the ones that are rolled to character? Yeah. Face? Yeah, because otherwise mm. they'd be energy dice. Yeah, they would, wouldn't they? Because yeah. they they would be character dice in your bag or yeah. on any face or yeah. on no they're face. Yeah. Their, whatever their face is showing. Uh, okay, this is not how that card is meant to work, though, surely. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think Peter's right and Ben's right. <laughs> <laughs> Rare recurrence. <laughs> Everybody's we right. We disagree, but they're both right. Yeah, which makes this quite agree, a lot worse. This, really. this, yeah. I agree with yeah. what you're saying, yeah. but it should be the other way. Uh, yeah, trigger energize, I guess. Second shot energize. Yeah. Yeah, but it wouldn't though, would it? Because it's not a character die. Yeah, but you want the energy. Yeah, if you want the energy die, right? So if, if it rolls roll the character face, but you want the energy, then it's oh, we well, see what you mean. Yeah, you, I mean, what, what I what I thought Ben meant was that you could trigger energize twice, but of course you couldn't because it'd have to no, be no, 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 it'd have to be on the character. If you're if you're yeah. buying dice just to try and roll them on double energy yeah. and then buying other dice <laughs> so to have could, another shot at that, there's something twice. wrong. <laughs> okay, let's move I on. Just to something. something you can <laughs> use it to trigger spark twice on a turn. Oh you wow! Could. No, no, you can no different yes, phases. No different huh? phases. It's, yeah, it's, no, it's, yeah, so at first you get the, the uh, roll, spark roll, in the roll, and then, the... roll, and then in your main phase. Aha. Uh -huh. Wicked, finally. Best yeah. card ever. Excellent. Ben, you are living the dream. Lead it to, <laughs> us, lead it to us, please. Um, yes, living the dream is a continuous. If among all the character cards on your team, you have at least three loyalty counters, your character dice get plus one and overcrush. So this is a card that was better than Greetings from Krakoa. Yes. Um, yes. And a win condition for loyalty counters is actually meta relevant. Uh, and again, of course, that win condition has to have that keyword overcrush, which is everyone's favorite keyword. Yeah. Uh, no, it's super good though. Uh, it plus is. contact. Yeah. Three loyalty counters the, is not difficult to get. No. What's the quickest way of getting three loyalty counters? There were no two ways, weren't there? Mora was one, and Mr. No, Magneto was the other. One. Magneto, yeah, when you mm. get. Or there. by Ronan. Attack with Ronan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, Supreme again, intelligence, yeah. yeah. Although mm. once you do get over uh, on everything and, and you have a lot of loyalty counters on Supreme intelligence, it, it does get pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that... <laughs> also, this was clarified to just always be the yeah. like, these texts. Yeah. Yeah. It's, always... just... it's just it's on, crazy. isn't it? Once you've rolled it, yeah. it's just really cool. I like it. You yeah. get it set up, just leave it there. Yeah. Ready yeah. for you to rock and roll. Um, yes. Very strong. Yeah, it's really cool, and only yeah, and there's only very few options for 
removing these sort of things, is there? I mean, Moira, but that, not much else is there at the moment in the modern meta. So um, it's uh, it's pretty cool, and it does make it does make that loyalty counter based kind of fun team pretty viable, I think. Mm. Um, yep. Good stuff. Making the team, James. You are making the team. Oh blarney! Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't think Moira removes loyalty counts, does she? I just I just no, scrolled. No, but she, removes, she, she, she removes the die, though, wouldn't she? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Uh, what am I reading? New- also, making, I would say, no, making make, the team. Sorry. Again. With lab test, use the rare rocket. No one ever uses that card. Boom. Uh, Dark Phoenix. Uh, Infinity Gauntlet. Sorry. Instead of lab test. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> making the team. Uh, roll a character die from your use pile. If it rolls a character face, field it for free. Otherwise, prep it. I think it's like um, transfer power action, but didn't that put it in the bag? Or did that prep it? I can't remember. That prepped anyway, something it. Don the helm. Don oh, yeah. the helm does this <laughs> exact thing. Go on, I James. I love that card. That card's so good. Say your joke about Don the helm. Oh, that the... Uh, <laughs> Don the Helm, the the uh, the famous mafia leader. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, dear. doesn't doesn't work if it's Telegraph, does it? Not um, really. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good, it's a decent ability. It's three though. I think was Don the Helm not two? Or was it three? No, it was three. I really oh, like okay. the card. I think mm. it's really. I, this is one of my favorite abilities. I was so surprised a number of times by this card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. surprise! Uh, oh, yeah. I was not expecting that to be fielded this turn. Yeah, play it with that. Okay. Play it with that tomb cost. That tombstone that costs four to field. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really intimidate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The yeah. fact that you field it um, is good as well. Yeah. It's better mm-hmm. than the yeah um, polymorph. And, yeah, and, and if you don't roll it on the character face, you still get to prep it. Yeah. So you always yeah. get value. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Like yeah, it a lot. Nice. Um, mutant Research Program, Peter. Yes, the reason to play Founders. Uh, it's two oh, costs yes. action. And if you have at least two active Founder character dice, draw and roll three dice. Otherwise, draw and roll one die. So <laughs> if if you are playing Founders and your opponent is not, they are not very likely to buy this because paying two to roll one die is not worth it. Uh, but paying two to roll three dice is pretty good. Yeah, it is. Can I can I say just say that the card is really dreary? It's <laughs> like really. I mean, I like science and I like microscopes, but this is really grey and lab coaty and oh, I like yeah, it. it's like also a bit, bit fuzzy. Hmm. I know this is not from a cover. This is a, a this is a pack. very small like Somewhere cut out, out, isn't it? Enlarged. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but we don't talk about art on this podcast. This is nice, we do uh, especially it. in draft. We do occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. If you're playing Founder, it definitely makes it doable. And probably your opponent won't be, so that's always good. Uh, yeah. Mutation. Uh, ben? Uh, yeah, Mutation. Swap target character dice in the field zone with target non-psychic character dice in the player's use pile. Uh, so yours or your opponent's. Spin that character dice to level one. Pay a mask, uh, global, sorry, pay a mask, spin one of your character dice down level to spin another type of character die up a level. Yeah, we know it. We love it. Polymorph, global uh, card, mutation card that's been seen lots of play. Yeah. Do you know what this, this is? This one's cool. It's a, it's a Swiss army knife. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, lets you bring in stuff, it... removes your opponent's stuff. Yeah. Gets around Check tracks video. and that kind of thing. Great. Check out me and Peter's video. Uh, for more details, I'll put the link in the show notes. Please do. And James, give us organic steel. Uh, continuous, three cost. Uh, prevent up to two damage to target character die and move this die to your use pile. If you have an active x man character, also gain one life. Mm. <sighs> I've seen similar stuff before, which didn't see any play either. Yeah. It won't. No. no. Power bolt, nice, Peter. Nice card. Power bolts, it's a classic. It's a three cost, deal two damage to target character die or player. Always fun in draft. Yeah. Probably not enough for control. Sometimes the only way to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. An old friend. Yeah. Welcome back. The flexibility on uh, die or player is very nice. The yeah, two damage is not up to that much. Not really. Characters, but yeah. No. 
Ben, radicalization. Okay, let's get a good one. Three cost. Deal three damage up to three damage to target X Men or Brotherhood character die. On a double burst face, also KO target psychic character die. Mm. But that's not why we're here. No. Why we're here is the global pay a shield, target character die gains X Men affiliation or Brotherhood until the end of the turn. Yeah. So it can't work in the reserve pool, only works when the character dice are in the actual field. Yeah. Sadly. But making stuff X Men or Brotherhood is very interesting. Mm. Uh, affiliation gaining. Has always yes. been one that's been really uh, undervalued, but I think by casual players, um, mm. Mm. but people who play quite meta-heavy teams know why this global can be so good. Mm. Um, one you should. We mentioned around. too. We mentioned too much earlier. Uh, it's good if you play with the affiliation of a too much character in the field, yeah. um, and that works nicely, as as Peter mentioned earlier. With what was it, Mystique? Mystique, yeah. So you can um, make the Mystique an X Men, and then every X Men you feel you can spin out uh, an opposing character. But it sadly doesn't work, as Ben mentioned, uh, making stuff psychics, around. for example, in your reserve pool no. uh, into Brotherhood characters. That would no. That would be that would be uh, too much, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, but you course, could yeah. spend um, like two shields to make that Wolverine unable to be spun out. <laughs> Every turn oh, you yes. do that, I yeah. am it's definitely cheaper that. than the Miss Sinister Global. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not when they have a uh, Lilandra though. You'd have to pay four life rather than. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> I'll so, pay five yeah. to buy him, three to kill him, uh, <laughs> and another two energy to make him useful. Okay. <laughs> two energy yeah. every turn to make him useful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and and just to to be clear, we you can't use this to make something copyable with hope, can you? Because it's the target no, it's character the card die instead yeah. of a card. Yeah, and she copies a card, so it doesn't give it to the card. But it also works nicely with the actual card itself, which is. It's fun. Um, the fact that you can deal three damage to target, character, target X Men or Brotherhood. Yeah, and then obviously you can choose the card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's cool. Now we've got a few reprints now, haven't we? Um, James uh, Rally. Uh, Rally, which was seen in Infinity Gaul and, and strangely not used to the point where I couldn't remember what the artwork looked like. It's uh, move up to two psychic dice from your use pile to your field zone. Double burst instead. Move three psychics instead. Made a huge splash in was it in AVX I think because yeah, of the promo. gobby and stuff. Yeah. Um, and hasn't seen much play since. No, I think was... Instant War does does what it does probably more effectively. Perhaps it was so good that uh, Eric Lang famously said designer of Dice Master said that um, that was one they were considering banning in <laughs> AVX times, right. but they they changed the transition zone rules so it's not yeah. As useful yep. as it was, because no, exactly. you can't put psychic straight into your transition zone. Is that uh, straight into your sorry, um, yeah. your reserve, your use bar? Used. Yeah. Peter, give yeah. us take cover, will you? Take cover. Also, a reprint. Uh, three cost. A character dies. You control get plus two defense, and on the burst phase, a target character die gets an extra plus three defense, and it also has a global page shield target character that gets plus one defense hmm. that's an awful lot of defense um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. there, there are some uses for this maybe with the the, the death bird uh, death bird yeah give extra d to stuff but i i don't yeah uh, nick mentioned uh, um combining this with with the uh, iceman and uh, the jubilee that deals damage for each uh, uh x-men uh, oh yeah, that was good. Uh, energy you spent. So mm. if you have a, a shield X Men, you mm. could pay a shield to give your Iceman an extra defense, and then deal him one damage mm. with the Jubilee, and then so you would could effectively uh, keep doing that. Two damage your opponent. Shields. Yeah, and mm. you don't damage your your, your Iceman because his defense keeps going up. Nice. Yeah. But I, there there aren't and, enough good cheap shield X Men, I think, to make this work. Well, there's Angel. There's Angel. <laughs> good, good. good. <laughs> oh, well, do, you, yeah. do you know how many? Do you know how many times Take Cover has been printed under that name? Go on. No, five, F- four. Wow. Uh, this set: uh, Avengers Infinity, Superman, Wonder Woman, and AVX originally. Blimey. This right. card was uh, really good back in the day mm. with the um, 
was it the bronze dragon that one the patch kind of teams oh yeah where you could yeah, boost their yeah, defense yeah. and flip them mm. yeah. yeah it was good yeah. it was yeah. cool yeah but not so much now. Uh, let's move on to the front line. We are almost there. Penultimate card, the front line, another reprint. Uh, ben. Front line, five cost. Unblockable attack and character dice. Un- unblockable? <laughs> Unblocked, sorry. Attack and character dice gain plus three attack until the end of turn. Um, then the global pay a fist target opposing character die can't block this turn unless your opponent pays one life. Yeah. So that global's kind of cool, especially seeing as you can do it multiple times. Yeah. Um, to stop your opponent blocking, although they can pay one life, but that, that can add up. Um, mm-hmm. But the real action here is um, the the real action here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The plus right. three yeah. attack for yeah. unblocked characters. <laughs> yeah, so you can get a bunch of go wide, use your master mold to go wide, and then give them all plus three attack. Boom, win. Yeah, yeah really exactly. strong. <laughs> it's really good. Worth the five. Co- I mean, it's not often that action dice are worth the five cost. This is definitely worth the five cost. Yes, it is. Very, very good. Very, very strong. Always nice. Even to get better when you can just uh, like use it for free with uh, Beholder or Ultraman. Uh, yeah, Ultraman. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> really, really cool. Okay, <laughs> let's round up, James. For you, get the honor of the very far, the very final oh, card. Fantastic. The last card is Tweet Ranks. That's a three cost basic action card. If you have at least three active character dice that share a team affiliation, KO target character die. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. And the global is pay a shield a target character die with at least one loyalty counter gets minus two attack and minus two defense. Yeah. <laughs> As if you needed any more. Yeah, not exactly. to use loyalty counter. <laughs> um, I suppose it might be good against in, in opposition to that one that we mentioned, the Living the Dream we mentioned earlier, but I don't know, mm. it's not really going to save you bacon, really. No. It no. certainly isn't. And it seems, yet again, we finish on a damp squib. <laughs> squid. <laughs> damp squid of enormous proportions. But never mind, we have got through every... Oh, every, they're all 152 cards in the Dark Phoenix um, saga expansion. I'm, I'm feeling quite exhausted. I don't think it's just I a clock save. Yeah, <laughs> we've choose gone our through... favourite basic actions. Oh no, we're not, oh. not doing that. Oh, it's Nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move us on before uh, you have a chance to do mutation it. Mutation for me. <laughs> Stop talking, uh, everybody. Yeah, I like mutation. <laughs> <laughs> we're moving on. There's no time. We must move on. Shall we move on to no? Um, yeah, no. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, Basic action cards, yes, there are some favourites. People like them. Um, but uh, we should just round off our whole review at this point by by just revealing the winner of the rare vote. Does anybody remember what it was? What people voted for as the card they were most excited about was bringing it, to the table? It, Storm? <laughs> <laughs> it was indeed Storm, James. Yes, the one that we've already referenced here that re-rolls stuff, that pings stuff out, that does all sorts of horrible stuff. Is a seven cost, but of course it's copyable by Hope, which a number of people did vote for as their favourite card in this set, even though she isn't even in it. But um, that's uh, Storm was top. Uh, Colossus was second in the little poll, the one that just sits back and does damage. Yeah, those are the two standout ones. Every single turn, which are really cool. But then there's Cable. Cable was third, yeah. which is also really cool. That doubles the damage. Uh, that doubles the attack of other attacking characters, and um, and then. There was uh, honourable mentions for Dark Phoenix, Jubilee, and Phoenix as well. Mm. So there's some lots of good stuff in that. If you want to catch up with all our thoughts, then do listen to episode 40. Oh, I've just realised we're episode 50. I didn't even mention it at the start of the show. I completely Hooray! forgot. This is episode 50. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> we've done we've done 50 of these. I mean, you'd have thought by now we'd be slightly more competent than we currently are, but we Speak are for yourself. Into the- <laughs> <laughs> into number 50 congratulations all around everybody we've spent a lot of time doing this and thank you for joining us on the ride while i think to mention it all right well um should we round up with a little bit of aob okay well at the time of recording there's been some dramatic news today because it seems like a bit of a, a first for uh, Dice Masters, as far as any of us are aware, there seems to be some 
advanced product seems to have accidentally been released onto the streets in that <laughs> someone has managed to buy a, a kryptonite crisis um feed of uh eight um draft packs which has sort of stunned the community when they were um putting pictures on the discord server um and we don't really know why this how or how this has happened we don't know what's going on i'm sure WizKids are frantically investigating the security breach at this point um i don't know ben whether you've been secretly infiltrating the uh, the Dice Masters I even headquarters, got Dark Phoenix, yeah, <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> um, so we don't really want to know what's going on, but anyway, it seems like someone in Utah has managed to buy uh, somehow a Kryptonite Crisis um, feed from their local store, and um, everybody was stunned to see them posting pictures of it on the Discord server. Um, I mean, there are some interesting stuff there, but the thing that we really should mention is the return, it seems, of the Half-Elf Bard ability. So one of the cards in the the, uh, the set that's been spoiled is a rare Barry Allen, who's a seven-cost fist. And his text reads, when Barry Allen attacks, each attacking character die gets plus 1A and plus 1D for each one of your other attacking character dice and he also has a kind of funky prep global that relies on you fielding something and purchasing something on that same turn but obviously it's that top level ability that we're particularly interested in because obviously it's very similar to the age old age old half elf bard ability that dominated the day um before it was re- uh, rent uh, what's the word rotated out and um, what do we think about seeing this potentially back, Ben? Uh, what do you what do you make of this? Uh, yeah, no, uh, one of my favourite abilities, probably. Um, Is it? Nice mid range kind of window. Well, I let you lot do lots of things, right? You can go faster, than you can go kind of mid range mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. You go ultra control with it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was super broken, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, but then I don't know. That's that's the way it was. Everyone liked it. Um, well. Everyone played it. Not everyone liked it. I think everyone hated it. Seven costs. I think people are going to like it a lot better. It's still going to be very strong. Yeah. It definitely um, is. So people are still going to play with it. Uh, I'm going to play with it. For sure. Uh, and yeah. Godcatchers are still spammy. Uh, Becky's still spammy. Yeah. So that's what is uh, happening with ultra competitive. At least this gives you a chance to do heavy control and then have something uh, on the back end to kind of follow through with. Yeah. Once you've bought your other three six costs, and then you can buy a seven. <laughs> <laughs> but James, you mentioned something about going. Was it you that mentioned about going wide earlier? Um, and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, this plays into that very clearly. Um, this is a and it's, you know, it's slightly different. The the text we probably should mention because it's only the attacking dice, mm. uh, or or rather. Uh, each attacking die, character die, gets plus one attack for each of your other attacking die. So it's only concerning the attacking ones. You can't sit back with some of them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Peter pointed out that it is all of your dice, regardless of whether they're different. So you could do it with like a bunch of psychics. And they'd, if you did it with four psychics, everything would get plus four A and D buff just from, from the repeated same character. That defense nice. buff is just ridiculous as well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing <laughs> that, that made it break. the ridiculous yeah. part about Bard as well. Like you could yeah. survive one wave of it. Yeah. They basically took yeah. out your whole field and they didn't lose anything. Exactly. No. Yeah. They should have learned from that Gross. probably. But seven cost is probably more balanced. Yeah. And Peter has christened it, I think. Yes, I have christened it Bardy Allen. <laughs> Bardy Allen. Yeah, at at least good. it's not an X-Men character. No, oh my <laughs> days. <laughs> yes. It does have the Justice League ability, so we don't know, obviously, if in set there is another. You may copy the ability of another Justice League character um, oh, out it. there somewhere. Could you imagine the pain if it was? I mean, that The more was, interesting thing is surely <laughs> the different dice that are available. They, they took and taken a whole picture of all the characters in the set. We can work them all out. Like, it's fun to see Doomsday back and Booster Gold back. Oh, right. Oh. Maybe we'll get a good one this time around. Booster Gold, um, then Jimmy Olsen. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, it's Jimmy back, right, yeah. Jimmy Olsen's back, yeah. Blue Beetle's back. 
Oh, that's um, cool. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Um... And the kryptonite, obviously. Ooh, kryptonite. Maybe we'll get an Ultraman. Ooh, it's kryptonite. The there's no Ultraman there, is there? <laughs> yeah. I really like the Starfire <laughs> dice. I know we're talking about dice, but the Starfire dice look really cool. <laughs> anyway, it I'm looks excited. Terrible. I think there's there's some cool stuff. Big Barda. There's a the, there's a bat signal, isn't there? There, which um yeah, and obviously we haven't had. I mean, this set and oh, the previous set. Yeah. Yeah, this set and the oh. previous set has been totally devoid of any action dice, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Aside from the basic actions, so um, be interesting if we finally do if we do get some back. That would be uh, nice. But yeah, uh, brilliant. So yeah, or it's all a hoax. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I don't think it is. Pretty, yeah. pretty sophisticated hoax. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I would, I would tip my hat if that was a hoax. <laughs> Yeah, it's Remember when we thought Imprisoned was back? That's not. <laughs> Where's the bat signal? Is uh, that the yellow clear, yellow clear dice. Mm. Oh, I can hardly see that. Okay. Fair <laughs> My eyes just skipped over that. I the one that's next to the Batman that. and the Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's lots to digest there. If you want to find out more, then do visit the DM Spoilers uh, page on the uh, Discord, Dice Masters Discord server, because there's lots of chat and lots of stuff um, there. You can see the pictures. You can and see the cast if, themselves. If you don't want to find out more, obviously, don't visit the DM Spoilers channel. Indeed. Especially <laughs> if you don't want Charterstone Spoilers. <sighs> I don't know what that is, but yes, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um Excellent. All right, well, shall we move on to the little bit of chat about Dice Fight before we round up? James, I'm sure you are there, poised and ready to tell us. I'm primed. I'm what primed. Is Legacy up. on April the 7th. Yeah. I think that's the, the next event. Is that? Yeah, well, yeah it is. Because we're recording yeah. this remarkably early. We are. Legacy 15 is the one which is coming up, and the one after that is only Marvel. I can't believe you're still re- going on with the Legacy. This is crazy, isn't it? Is Legacy going to have Dark Phoenix? Legal? Um, I think so. I think they've, they've basically decided to open the floodgates. This is uh, yeah. this is Dan, Danny right. and Rick. Um, yeah, why not? And it's proxies gonna be are, a good one. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's 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 fresh blood for the legacy. So yeah, it should yeah. be good. Brilliant. Yeah, people must have been down to boost the original booster gold in terms of utility <laughs> pieces. <laughs> yeah, that's the best wing con remaining. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brilliant! It's that or Vixen. Um, take <laughs> take your pick. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that is that. That is a th- obviously Thursday nights, nine p.m. British summer time, as we now are. Ten p.m. Um, what do you call yourself? Central European time. What are you lot over there? Central European summer time. Summertime, right? Summer, yes, sounds summer, good. Summertime. That does sound good. We are into summer. It's getting hot. Well, not really, but uh, we are in the UK. Um, but yes, so do get involved with that community if you fancy a bit of online dice masters action. As ever, we will put a link uh, in the show notes to the dice fight page. Other than that, that is the end of our show. We have got to the end of our epic run through of all of the cards in the Dark Phoenix expansion. What do you think of our review of each individual card? Did we get anything right? Did we get, any, did we, did we get anything right? <laughs> anything? Hopefully something. Did we get anything wrong? Do you agree, disagree violently with anything that we've said? Do let us know by getting in touch using the contact details. James, the email to use is... Hello at dmunited.eu. It is. If you've enjoyed listening to the show, it would be lovely if you would give us a nice review, if you could rate, and don't forget to subscribe using your favourite podcast app so you can be the first to know when a new episode drops. Other than that, we'll be taking a short break over the Easter holidays, but we'll be back with the next episode on 2nd of May. So until then, all that remains is for us to say goodbye. Bye-bye. Ta-ta. Bye-bye.